Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. We divided the video into three parts, as befits the name of the movie. In the first part I'll talk directly about whether the show is watchable or not. No spolier from the show or the book in this part. In the second part I will talk about the plot of the book and how successful it is. And in the last part one will compare the book and the series. Now if you're ready, here we go. Is this series watchable? Yes, watchable. Even though sometimes it goes out of the book, I think that some of the changes made are necessary, and I would make the same decision. The series did a very good job in every general category, such as visual effects and acting. For those who haven't heard, let me give you one more piece of information. The producers of this show are the same producers of Game of Thrones. I think they wanted to get back on top after Game of Thrones. And they came up with the three-body problem. And it's good. I once read about the three-body problem. I couldn't read the other books due to my busy schedule, even though I was rabid with curiosity at the end of the book. Moreover, since nine out of ten of the names in the book are in Chinese, I was not very enthusiastic. But after watching this series, one decided to read the books again. Now let's slowly get to the plot of the show. I will give you a little bit of information even though it is not a spolier. The series and the book both have three main parts. The first episode deals with the revolution of Chinese culture in a very violent way. In the immediate aftermath of the Cultural Revolution, the stupid communists, who thought they were very clever, thought that absolute authoritarianism was the solution and that with authoritarianism, they could even reign in science. For example, Einstein is used as a synonym for Antichrist because he came to America and worked with the Americans at that time. The discoveries and work of Einstein and every scientist without exception who collaborated with America were condemned in China. By the way, I'm not talking about the book right now. The scientists who have been proven to have exchanged letters with a number of Western scientists to transfer scientific knowledge are Chinese communists. The Chinese once thought that theories like Einstein's theory of relativity would disappear and form a different reality if they just out of sheer stupidity objected to them and pretended that those scientific findings did not exist. But of course that wasn't the truth. Because it doesn't matter whether it is communism or religion. If a phenomenon competes with science, it is bound to lose in the end. But ignorant people still continue to fight it and remove the theory of evolution from the curriculum. As if Adam and Eve would make more sense to children if they were not taught evolution. If we had made this video in China at that time, I would have been killed without discussion. The book begins in the light of another scientist whose father was killed during this cultural revolution simply because he was a scientist. A scientist who has lived through the Cultural Revolution to the bone and despaired of all humanity one day discovers a way to communicate with aliens and this is where the events begin. Because in response to the signal we send to the aliens, the response from our alien friend is, don't contact me again, don't reply to this message. You are very lucky that I notice your message, don't repeat it. It's not good for you or for us. Although it is an extremely frightening message, our friend, whose life was ruined by the communist revolution, responds by thinking that a more advanced civilization than humans is our only chance. And an entire civilization learns of our existence. And that's what the book in the series is really about. What happens if we encounter another intelligent life form just for light years away, so close that on a cosmic scale it's right under our noses? How do we react as human beings? Can we live peacefully or not? The book seeks answers to many ethical and philosophical questions, such as whether both species must destroy each other to maximize their own self-interest, or whether there can be a way out. This book is one of the best science fiction books I have ever read. Because in my eyes, the Chinese friend who wrote the book has already written his name in gold letters among the most legendary science fiction writers such as George Wells, Jules Verne, Arthur Charles Clarke, Asimov, and Frank Herbert. So the book is that good. And what is the subject of the book? Okay, we said humanity's first contact with space, blah blah blah. But it's not that simple, of course. 
the first civilization that humans communicated with was a civilization that suffered from the three-body problem. So what does that mean? You know Newton, he developed the equations of physics that revolutionized our civilization, allowing us to calculate the orbits of the Sun, the Moon, Mars, Venus, and more. He developed equations, many of which still work today at the high school level. It is on the basis of these equations of Newtonian physics that we can calculate with incredible accuracy the motions of two celestial bodies orbiting each other. For example, we know how many solar eclipses there will be over the next 1,000 years, how many times the moon will revolve around us. But these systems, which work perfectly onto celestial bodies, do not work when a third celestial body is involved. For example, if there was another planet around the Earth about the size of Mars and the moon orbited between the Earth and this planet, we would not know exactly what would happen in 1,000 years, let alone one year from now. So if we can calculate the moon, the Earth and the sun, the Earth alone is not included in these calculations. Since the Earth and the moon have stable orbits, simulations proceed by calculating their combined mass. It got a little complicated when I explained it in terms of planets. Let me explain it through the sun. Our sun is a single star, but many stars in the universe are not alone usually in the form of binary and some even triple star systems. If it's binary, no problem. We can still calculate the years, the seasons, the orbit of our planet. But if you're in a triple star system, it's difficult, because no matter how sophisticated your computers are, you can never develop an orbital model that covers your planet and your star. After one day, you can pass too close to one of the suns and get scorched. After for years, you could be pushed out of the system and freeze. Even worse, you can never calculate it. If you know that in four years, your planet will freeze and then warm up again, maybe you can take precautions. But unfortunately, you can never calculate it because of chaos theory. Now I would try to explain chaos theory with examples like the weather or dice, but that should be left to the science channels. Anyway, in the book, the first civilization that the human race communicated with is located in a three-star system. So their planets are in chaos, even though they have made great scientific progress. They have repeatedly been wiped out by major catastrophes. All civilization cares about is how long we can have a stable planet before chaos starts and we can advance our civilization. And while they are dealing with these planetary problems, they receive a message from Chinese scientists. Hello, we're from Earth. Imagine the world in terms of that civilization. The difference between the hottest and coldest point of the planet's surface is less than 100 degrees, which is remarkably stable for a planet whose orbit has barely changed for millions or even billions of years. What would you do? Would you continue to roll the dice on your planet that will eventually disappear? Or would you like to travel to paradise? The book is such an amazing book that seriously, what I've said so far takes up a tiny space in the overall story perspective. I can't remember how many times after reading the book I had hours of ethical philosophical discussions with my friends about the events in the book. The book is far ahead not only in its treatment of these issues, but also in its level of complexity. One minute you are looking at chaos theory, the next minute you are looking at the Fermi Paradox. The next minute you are looking at the ethics of bloodless revolution. The next minute you are looking at scientific ethics. The next minute you are looking at whether a small part can be killed for the life of the majority. The next minute you are getting tired just counting the topics. Let's compare the book with the series. Because the book is set in China, many of the people in the book are Chinese. But in the series they have done an international mix. I'm not against black characters who were originally light-skinned. If the original was Asian, I think it should stay Asian. Another big change is that in the series, a number of scientists who would not normally be together for a long time are shown as if they have always been together. I think I would have made a similar choice. In terms of the fast pace of the story, I just think that the suicides were not conveyed well enough because I was very impressed by the way suicides were handled in the book. The theme of the show is that scientists have been committing suicide a lot lately. It's very simplified to make it easy to explain to the general audience. 
But I think the story could have progressed in a fiction that was a little more similar to the book. Again, according to the book, the scientific background is very much bypassed. While the book contains very detailed scientific explanations, in the series they skipped them and left most of the work to YouTubers like me. For example, since Chaos Theory is not explained in the series, it is not mentioned why the trajectory of the three bodies cannot be calculated. But I'm still glad the show came out despite all its shortcomings. I realize it's a bit of a complicated video, but on the one hand we had to explain the background of some events. I apologize if I confused you. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Please subscribe to the channel and like and share the video.